Welcome to the latest in Redwood's podcast series. We're talking to SAP experts and those on the front line to look at some of the technical issues and challenges around SAP and finance and accounting processes. I'm Andy McHugh, tech journalist and editor, and I'm joined today by finance transformation expert, Adrian Lee. Welcome, Adrian. Hi, Andy. Coming up in this episode is the subject of batch input processing in SAP. We'll be looking at how this works, what some of the issues and challenges are, and how technology such as automation can help tackle these and achieve the goal of eliminating a lot of the manual effort and ultimately making the process touchless. Adrian, let's start with the um, the actual batch in- input processing in SAP. It's I know it's particularly used around journals, but also for things like uploading budgets and forecasts, uh, mass transfer of assets, uh, many other tasks. So at a very simple level for a journal, for example, um, you know, people need to work outside of SAP to get the data, put it in the right format, and then that needs to go into SAP for validation and posting. So just talk us through that process in a bit more detail. Sure, Andy. Yeah. So as you said, the the first step in the process is um, identification of a need. There needs there is a journal to be processed, which could be during the month or could could be at month end. Um, the first thing to do is the data for the journal requester is is sourced somehow. So a, a file of data is created, uh, and that file of data needs to be uh, created and presented to SAP in a predefined format. So certain fields in certain sequences, certain fields of certain data types, you know, date fields, value fields, etc. Uh, and typically that's done in a spreadsheet by the journal requester. Once the file has been created uh, for, for uh, containing all the journal data that is passed to SAP uh, and the SAP process, in this case journal upload, is, is then executed. Um, and that goes through a bit of a black box process in SAP where the data re- is uh, format checked. So are the fields in the, in the right format, in the right sequence? And then the content, um, having passed that check, is then validated. You know, is it a valid account number? Is it a valid cost center? And so on. And a, yeah. another check that's performed is a security check. So is the person uh, presenting this journal authorized to, to make postings of this kind, but also to the accounts and cost centers within the journal? And then assuming all of those processes are, are, are passed uh, from an SAP black box perspective, SAP databases are then updated with the journal. Yeah. So, I mean, so it sounds relatively straightforward if it was all to go very smoothly. Collect the data, right format into SAP. SAP does its magic, checks it, everything's okay. Um, clearly, it doesn't always go like that. So what, what are some of the issues and the ways that it, it, it actually goes wrong? Yeah, so I think uh, it... In reality, the sort of uh, typical problems that happen are that, uh, you know, because the data is created offline, uh, the data is not validated. It relies on the journal requester uh, putting valid account numbers in, for example, valid values. Um, If you're doing this in a spreadsheet, it might be that, um, you know, somebody puts an amount in a date field or a date in an amount field. So the point I'm making is that there's very little validation when you're creating the file. And it's not until you then pass that that file of data to SAP that validation checks are then performed. So you could do all this great work in, in, in Excel, for example, create the file of data and then have SAP reject the entire thing because uh, it doesn't like the data, the data format, or you're, you're, not, al- you're not authorized to make that posting. Um, and, and as a consequence of that, there is a lack of transparency in the process. It's literally somebody requests a journal, puts the file together, passes it to SAP, and then gets either a red flag or a, a green flag at the end of the process, uh, which is not ideal, particularly at month end, where um, you know there, there are time pressures. Yeah. So this is. I mean, clearly, it can be. If that happens, it can be frustrating and, and time consuming. And. So if we look at the impact of this, and you you just touched upon it there, on the wider kind of accounting finance process, particularly the month-end close, what is the impact that that then has uh, on that? Yeah, there's a number of different impacts, Andy. So the first thing is if you're having to submit something to SAP and then wait for a yes or a no or a a red or a green tick at the end of it, um, 
quite quite often because there are, as we've discussed before, dependencies between various tasks, uh, particularly at month end. Uh, it may well be you have to wait until you've got the uh, the green flag for the journal going through successfully before you then do another task. So automatically you're building latency into that process. Um, and the other problem could be, and this is this is quite a common um, error, you'd, you'd be surprised, but people working under pressure, um, sometimes people put the journal entries into SAP the wrong way around. So what happens is the journal goes through clean, you then move on to the next step and you see that the balance is not uh, on an account, is not what you're expecting. So you then have to reverse the journal that you've just uploaded and then post it correctly again. So, you know, because it's a black box process, you're not having that interaction with SAP you're not finding out until the end of an update whether something's worked or not or whether it's giving you the right result or not. Uh, yeah. And, and that's typically some of the issues and challenges, particularly at month end, for example. Yeah. And so how do how do organizations uh, try to to manage some of these issues? You know, what kind of tools or methods do they use to, to try and get, you know, make it better? Yeah, well, again, we've talked about sort of point solutions, tactical solutions, and how they're deployed in uh, in a number of areas with uh, with SAP and finance. And this is one good example where there are a, a plethora of different tools available, um, such as Windshuttle, for example, for uh, specifically uploading data into SAP journals and, and, and the like. Uh, so quite often a tactical approach is, is used. Uh, sometimes organizations take more of a homegrown approach, so they'll build uh, macros uh, in an Excel spreadsheet that creates the data and then passes that on to SAP. Um, so there's a number of different um, uh, solutions that are adopted to try and solve that particular batch input problem. Yeah, but going back to your black box analogy there, clearly while that might help with some of the pre-SAP kind of work, it still has to go into that black box um, and there's still an issue there. So it, it presumably doesn't really solve the problem, does it? It, it doesn't, no. The, um, it, really, the problem, the problem comes if, if SAP rejects the data um, and also comes from the point of view that uh, by then you've had a, 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 a period of time pass, so you have a time delay, latency built into the process. Um, so, so really, t in time-critical situations like month-end, uh, it's not an ideal situation to have to rely on, um, you know, getting a, a, a red flag or a green flag at the end of a black box process from SAP. So, um, so, so that is the real problem: is that lack of interaction and that lack of being able to move forward until you've got the thumbs up from SAP. Yeah. So the ultimate goal is obviously to make this kind of, um, I think the phrase is uh, touchless, uh, touchless batch input processing, in, you know, improve the visibility of, of what's going on there and the transparency. So how can technology, you know, such as finance automation, um, help to tackle some of these issues? Yeah, so the, 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 the real kind of solution here is to try and give the journal requester, the, the person or, or team that put together the file of data to go into SAP, to give them as early visibility as, as possible of any um, issues or errors in, in the data or in the, uh, the format of that data. So, so that, is, that is key, is, is, is giving that early, early insight as to uh, what the problems are. So the idea would be that um, you know you do a a validation check or a pre-validation check before you pass that into SAP for update, and that then allows a, a sort of a dynamic interaction between the requester and SAP, such that you know if there are multiple errors and dependencies, those errors can be flushed out and corrected uh, before the update is then passed passed on to SAP, and and the other part of that is then the orchestration because. As you can imagine, if you, if you pass a file of data into a process to then go into a system like SAP, you've then got that time lag between when you pass the data and when you find out whether it's been successful or not. And having something orchestrate and let you know what's going on it, in real time and in a, in a dynamic way, that is a huge advantage to a journal requester, again, typically at month end when time is, is really precious. Great. So, so obviously you've talked us through how that works. So just briefly to, to sum up then, what, what would be the benefits of, of automating this, this process? Uh, for, for me, it would be that you're, you're 
uh, as a requester of the journal, you're you're finding out quicker there's a problem and you're correcting at source uh, before there's been a, an hour or two hours elapsed time pass. Um, really important if you've got dependencies as well. So if that journal has to go through before you do an, uh, subsequent tasks, the earlier you find out that it's been successful and the update has happened, the better. Uh, so, you know, speed is really important. So that's one of the key benefits. Uh, speed comes in a number of different ways. So it comes from elimination of delays and, and elimination of latency in that process. I think the other benefits are that um, by having uh, an automation solution manage the, uh, the batch processing, you're better able to, to optimize your SAP resources as well. So when the updates actually happen, because you'll have pre-validated the data, you'll know that, it, that SAP will accept the update, but it may well be that from a workload perspective, you want to queue up the work for SAP, particularly in a high volume environment, and, and have SAP manage that, that workload itself more effectively. I think the other part of it is the manual effort elimination as well. So in a typical scenario, what happens is somebody requests the journal, it get, gets passed into a shared service center, and it's somebody in the shared service center that manually processes that batch upload into SAP or puts it into a work queue. Uh, and by eliminating that manual effort in the middle there, you can have a situation where the requester of the data works directly effectively with SAP and can interact with the data and SAP to make sure that the update is going to be successful. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adrian. Thanks for that insight. And uh, that's our 10 minutes uh, kind of deep dive into all things batch input processing. I hope the listeners uh, found that useful and watch out for more episodes in this series. For more about this topic and finance automation in general, please go to redwood.com or find more podcasts and videos on our YouTube channel under Redwood Software. Thanks for listening.